Papa was born in 1923, when Singapore was part of the British Empire. The street settlement flag fluttered over government house, and the people of Singapore sang, God save the king. He was given the name Harry at birth, but he soon grew to feel that it did not fit him and the fact that he was a son of Singapore. When Papa was 10, his youngest brother, Swan Yu, was born. Papa, who was only 10, persuaded his father and his mother that it was not a good thing to give Swan Yu a Western name. And so, at 10 years old, he had prevailed in the household. Decades later, when Papa entered politics, he found the name Harry to be a political liability. And many think it was from politics that he found it, but in truth, two decades before that, he had felt that this was not right for him. When Long Ling and I were born, Papa gave us only Chinese names. And he used, in those days, there was no Han Yu Pinyin, so he used Wei Jiao's, which was the prevailing system, to spell the names. And as Papa did not have a good command of Chinese and came from a Pranakan household, he sought the help of the court interpreter, Mr. Wong Chong Min, in the choice of names. Two years ago, Long while walking around Queenstown, met Mr. Wong's son, the man who had named the three of us. The names parents choose for their children embody the hopes, aspirations, and dreams they have for them. Chinese names in particular, with their many possible wonderful layers of meaning, allegory, and poetry, lend themselves well to this. For the eldest son, Papa and Mama chose the name Xian Long. It means illustrious dragon. It was an appropriate and auspicious name for a boy, especially one born in the year of the dragon. For my sister, they chose the name Wei Ling which means the beautiful sound of tinkling jade. <laughs> I suppose Mama thought that that was an appropriate and feminine name for a daughter, though I don't think it, it in any way circumscribed Ling's development. For me, they chose the name Xian Yang. Some people think that since I'm called Yang, I must be born in the year of the goat. Actually, that's several years older than me. If I were the year of the goat, I'd be 60 now. The name Yang is from the word Zan Yang or Biao Yang. And indeed, it has a more literary origin. It was taken from San Zi Jing. Though my mother used to tease me before I knew this and said, your name means you're an illustrious show off. Actually, the phrase it's taken from was Yang Ming Sen Xian Fu Mu, which means to bring honor and glory to your parents. I'm sure many Singaporeans traveling abroad have often received compliments on Singapore and its transformation over the last 50 years. Usually, the conversation would quickly acknowledge the contributions of Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. I would nod in agreement, but I would not acknowledge my relationship. And I just kept quiet and said, yes, it's been a remarkable journey. Unsolicited compliments like this are the most authentic and heartfelt. Keeping private my family connection only served to enhance the pleasure for me. And as I developed a more, sadly, as I developed a more visible public profile, 
it has become harder not to be recognized as Lee Xian Yang and my father's son. I've taught my children not to mention or flaunt their relationship with their grandfather, that they needed to make their own way in the world on their own merit and industry. I've suggested to them that should they be asked whether they are related to Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, that a good answer was to say, my name is spelled L-I. Mr. Lee Kuan Yew's name is spelled L-E-E. -E. <laughs> Lee is one of the most common Chinese surnames in the world. And actually, given it's a Chinese surname, it's probably one of the most common surnames in the world. This response, which I suggested, was not meant to mislead or to obfuscate. It is born out of a desire to be recognized for who we are as individuals and not for who we are related to. We are immensely proud of Papa and his achievements, and yet perhaps it is part of our DNA to seek our own way in life. I'm sure that Papa would not have wanted otherwise. Papa, thank you for a lifetime of service to the people of Singapore. You made this little red dot the nation. All of us are proud to call home. Papa, thank you for being a wonderful husband and companion to Mama, for loving her completely, for caring for her during her illness and during your lives together. Papa, thank you for being my own special father, always there to guide, counsel, and advise me every step of the way but also prepared to step back and to let me find my own wings and to make my own way. Papa, thank you for loving my wife and my children, Shengu, Huanu, and Xiao. You have been a loving grandfather to each of them, sharing small pleasures, enjoying their companionship. Papa, it's hard to say goodbye. Your work is done and your rest is richly deserved. In our own different and diverse ways, my family and I will continue to honour you and your memory in all that we do.